there's more ice cream vans per population in the UK than anywhere else in the world. It's a British icon, in my opinion. It's a childhood memory, isn't it? You know, you hear the ice cream van, you run out, you're like, Mum, Dad, can I have an ice cream? It's the highlight of your week. We are renowned throughout the world. You'll find our ice cream vans on every single continent. We build everything in-house here from start to finish to give you that perfect ice cream van. Every van that we do here is bespoke. There is no two vans the same. They may look the same, but they're all different. And everyone presents its own challenges. At the end of the day, we're not just a manufacturing plant. We're not just a, a factory that produces ice cream vans. We're a family business. I've got brothers that work here. Everyone's got someone who's related who works here. Father and son. It's a family-run business and everyone's part of family. So I've been around for 60 years now. But in that time, you see the business has changed, uh, the world has changed, and to continue to be here for another 60 years, then we've got to look at a different way of doing things. So as an ice cream van builder, we now, of course, have to up our game. The automotive industry can't continue how it has done. and I'm Managing Director. We call this our, our Whitby Morrison Heritage Collection. Um, our dream would be to have a museum that's open to the public. But this is actually a Ford Thames left-hand drive. What's pretty unusual about this is that the ice cream salesperson would sit on the left, drive on the left, and whenever he came to his stop on the streets, he would step out onto the curb and actually serve ice cream from outside. Um, lots of kids in the 60s had a little model and it had a little uh, chime inside that you could wind the handle and it replicated the musical chime, which is quite, quite cute. But this one here is the, this is the Daddy O' Mall. This, this is what we call the rocket van. This is a beast of a van. It's got fins on the back, it's taller than everything else. It's iconic. I don't think there's anybody in the, the ice cream trade who doesn't aspire to own a, a rocket van. They're a classic. This was actually designed by a chap called Sid Cummins. He had some quite wild ideas as to what vans could look like. It's quite scary if you came across it on a, a dark night on a dark country lane and all of a sudden your headlights see that up ahead of you. Ice cream vans are in my blood at the end of the day. It's, it's my life. It's my family's life. It's the future of all the, all the team that, that work with us. My dad started back in 1962, started the company. I was adamant when I was at school that I wouldn't go into my dad's business. I just went home one lunchtime and said, Dad, I've just decided I'm going to leave Rolls Royce. And he actually said, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to come and work with you. And he said, oh, are you? <laughs> and that's what we did. We were, we were a great team together. And I left, well, from the highest paid 21-year-old at Rolls-Royce to the lowest paid working with my dad. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was an opportunity to make my mark and, and do something. I realised that I'd reach a crossroads whereby do we sell the business? Do we... Uh, do we have continuity with another generation? What's it going to be? Do we bring in someone? Just being mindful that I've got to protect everybody who works with us. It's, it's, a, it's a business for the future, not just for, for, for me uh, and my family. And I uh, went home one night and said to Ed uh, around the dinner table, I'm thinking of taking on a sales assistant. And he said, I'd like that job, Dad. The rest is history, really. My name's Ed Whitby. The title is Operations Director, which involves pretty much seeing 
everything that's going on here, working with customers, helping them bring their dreams to, to fruition, and, and overseeing everything else that's taking place in the business. But Ed now looks after all the, I'd like to say all the things that I don't like to do. <laughs> all, all the paperwork, the newsletters, the marketing, and some of the customer relations. He's very much a, a keyboard, write it all down man, which is what business need these days. When you hear as the boss's son, that is the title that you're given. And it's not just start at the bottom, you're starting lower than that. You have to earn the respect of people. You have to prove that you're not just here to make up the numbers. These are, are replica models of ice cream vans of, of years gone by, sort of like the history of the company, the development of, of vans over time. The models, they are very symbolic about what I bring to the company. We've been around for 60 years now. Uh, the business has changed dramatically during that time. Any successful business will change uh, from the early days of just a, a handful of people uh, making a few vehicles to where we are today of, of nearly 50 staff. Uh, producing nearly 100 ice cream vans in a year. My name's Chris Whitby, I'm 35. I'm production manager at Whitby Specialist Vehicles. So I'm responsible for anything on the workshop floor, really. Most of my time is spent on the floor of the workshop, just, just walking around, looking at issues, looking at problems, jumping in wherever, helping out where I can. I don't sit at a desk very often. It's a bit foreign to me, that, so being on the shop floor, much better suited. I got the job by chatting to my dad. My dad said to me, do you want to come work here? So I decided now was the time to, to join the family business. And here we are six years later. Chris is hands-on man. He's a trained engineer, and he relates to the, the lads on the shop floor well because of that, because he understands it. The three of us run the business together, uh, side by side. I think we make a great team. So, I mean, Dad's he's nearing retirement age now. So at this moment in time, it's like a handing over the reins from, from my dad uh, to the two of us. I don't actually ever see me retiring fully. I'd like to perhaps work a little bit less. I think my dad does find it very difficult to let go. You know, he's built this business from, from a very small stage, from when he joined my granddad. And when you've been such an integral part of that, to, to actually release it to, to somebody else, regardless of how much you trust them, I think it's quite a, quite a difficult thing to ask of anybody. Years ago, I would go on holiday and I'd be on the phone every day and um, struggle to relax, to be quite honest. Um, and then probably when it's getting to the end of the holiday and I started to relax, it was time to come back. I never really chilled out. So we need to prove to him that we've got what it takes that he can spend his time away from here and Chris and I can really drive this business forward and take it to where we want to be. So this, this is a starting stage of, well, any ice cream van. You need a base vehicle. So you see there, typical of the vans that you might see on the road for a delivery vehicle or something else. So you've got your base vehicle. And then from there, you can move on to the next stage, which is the fiberglass workshop, where you start with the bodywork and really turn it into an ice cream van. Get one. I'm Tommy Francis. I'm 55 years old, and my job is team leader, laminator. So we do all the fiberglass work, uh, bodies. We do the parts for the infr fridges inside the vans, lids, doors, everything that goes inside the van, and, and obviously the main shell that's at the side of you here. I've been here 32 years, so I must like the job. I think most people look at an ice cream van and think ice cream, lollies, flakes. But the reality of it is there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that go into an ice cream van making one. Every day there could be different jobs put in front of you. So I can make anything, yeah. Virtually anything. Probably 90% of the vans that are in Britain at the moment I have made.
Oh, this is old school. This is. I don't think you could use robots no. to paint the vehicles in no. this. They've got to be prepped by hand by humans anyway, haven't they? Every van's different. Every van's different anyway. Yeah. And it is. It's a very well-run business. Stuart's always run it well, he has, and the lads run it well, no. Stuart, Ed and Chris that run it, they, they know everybody here, it's that sort of a factory. Where I used to work in a factory, they, there was that many people there, they didn't know who you were, so it's, it's quite nice that way. They all know your skills, your, yeah. your limits and all that. I think one of the reasons people stay so long is because big companies, you're going and nobody knows who the manager is or who owns it. It's just a family-run business and everyone's part family. Sì, sì, va bene. Arrivederci. Ciao, ciao. My name is Antonio Coronato. I'm the sales manager. I'm in your hands. With a name like Antonio, it is a prerequisite to be fair to be within the ice cream industry. I've been in ice cream all my life, but 2005 I joined uh, joined Whitby Morris. What we're doing here, in reality, we're not just making and selling ice cream vans, is we're giving people the opportunity to create their own livelihood. I will take enquiries, I visit customers who are interested in purchasing an ice cream van. We will then go from the start um, in, in deciding what their requirements are um, to actually doing the order and getting it built here. And a few months later, they will then come here, pick up their new ice cream van, and I'll also do the, the training and the handover. I enjoy working here very much. I enjoy being able to give the customer, the ice cream man, uh, the perfect van for him. My favourite ice cream is vanilla, by far, and it has to be soft, with a chocolate flake in it. Vanilla with plenty of strawberry sauce. Vanilla, definitely. And soft. Nothing beats going to the ice cream van and having a, uh, a nice soft whip. This is the very latest recently launched e-power van. So as the name suggests, everything works directly from the e-power pack that is stored in the boot and therefore delivers soft ice cream through the batteries, through the solar panels, but most importantly, with zero emissions. It's the bee's knees of ice cream vans. I've been in ice cream all my life. It's actually in, in my DNA, in my blood, I'm sure. Of course, being Italian helps because everybody knows that Italians make the best ice cream in the world. You start at one edge and just keep going round, but make sure that you pull your hand down at the same time. Nobody buys an ice cream van to just sit in it. It's all about going out on the streets at the local parks and selling that ice cream to the people, and we're just um, allowing that to happen. Oh, sole mio, più bello è. Oh, sole mio, stai in a te. It's been a busy few years for us. Demand for the product has, has certainly increased. Over the last two years, we've faced a, a number of challenges. But right now, we've got a, a serious issue. It's 
Since late 2020, there's been a worldwide shortage of semiconductors, and they're vital to the automotive industry, and that has led to a lack of stock of new vehicles. So we've got to adapt, we've got to look for alternatives, and find a, a different way to, to deliver these ice cream vans. If we can't get the base vehicle, then it means obviously our customers can't get the ice cream van. So it is a genuine concern that we're not going to be able to get any more chassis or vans to fulfil our customers' orders. In a typical year where we may be receiving 50, maybe more of these, in the last 12 months we took delivery of five. So 10% is it's not enough. So our customers, they, they still need to go to work. They still need new ice cream vans. So we've had to improvise. So we've come up with a solution, and that is to find other vehicles, vehicles that perhaps have been built for a different reason, for, for an alternative use, but we can adapt those. We can change them and bring them into line with what we were building on previously. So if we look at the year ahead, We've got more work to do than we've ever had before. We've got a full order book, producing the best products we've ever produced, yeah. with the best team we've ever had. Well, you see where the pressure starts to creep in, like late summer where we're trying to get things out. It's just being realistic yeah. based on what comes in. So it's, it's either on time or it's late. That's tricky though, isn't it? Because well, when that... somebody's ordering a van in December and we're quoting a, a May delivery date, mm -hmm. we, we can't give them a precise date now. Well, exactly, you look at it down here, it's, it's, it's next to nothing. Yeah. Not having chassis cabs to build on means we've got to build on panel vans. So we've bought a lot of used panel vans, like this one here, where we cut the roof off, cut the back off, and then make it to an ice cream van. That's the solution we've had to come up with, just to get round to, to be able to build vans for customers. Unfortunately, that means a lot more labour to cut off the body and carry out the conversion. The main thing for me is uh, the customer's happy and that's, that's, yeah. that's the main thing. We've got the right team, we're geared up to make sure that everything is, is perfect. My name is Billy Bradshaw, I'm 17 and I mount the bodies at, at the factory. Billy's been here for just over a year now. He's still relatively new. He, he was starting the fiberglass glass area to start with, and he's moved out into different departments now. It'd be great for his confidence. Today, we're taking all the doors off. Bill is going to take all the doors off, take the parts off, and we can then cut the body off. And it's ready to move into an ice cream van. I wanted to become an apprentice because it was something straight from school where I could learn my skills, and it also just gives you an instant income and everything like that, so it's... It's a, I think it's a good thing for young people to do. Instead of just going to college, actually learn skills. When I was at school, I'd say my confidence levels were at an all-time low, just constantly doubting myself and seeing that, my, seeing that my work wasn't as good enough or that it wasn't the same as another person's in my class. Do the bottom one. Kids are taught, like, if they don't understand, that it's bad. Being told that you aren't good enough every day slowly sinks into your brain and, and it does have an effect on you. It makes you actually associate school with negative emotions and, and just not wanting to be there. It all factors into your self-esteem. Do you know where you're going to cut this, Bill? Yeah. You've done it before? Uh, yeah, I've got that. It kind of screwed me over in a way because I might not have tried as hard as I did on the mock tests because I thought they're only mock tests, they're not actually my actual GCSEs. I'm just going to try hard when it gets to the actual GCSEs. And when that actually came around, I, I was kind of stuck, you know what I mean? It has a knock on effect to the rest of your life. What are you going to do on your day to day out and see if you're going to go out and see people or if you're going to go and get this new job, if you're going to go and risk, risk the social interaction to, to, to go out there and actually put yourself out there, speak to people. important that we get the, the right people to work with us. It's not just about the, the Whitby's, it's about the whole company, it's, it's everybody within, within the business. You'll never hear me say that any other people are employed by me, work with me, I work with them, they work with me, and that's the relationship that we have. Um, 
and that goes for issues at work or issues outside of work. We're, we're there for them and I'm, I'm proud of it. There's a couple of good examples of, of, of people. Probably the best example is, is Alex. My name is Alex, Alex Gligor, and um, I'm the team leader in finishing area. I'm originally from Romania. I came here in 2011. I previously worked um, in a car wash. It was a good job at the time, but I felt like I could do better than that. And Stuart was one of our customers when one day he came in and uh, I got uh, talking with him. I said to him, I'm looking for another job. I just took a liking to you. I thought this lad's got the right work ethic. Uh, he, he could be good for us. The following Monday, basically, I started working for Stuart. So he came as a valetor and very quickly progressed up the ladder. Definitely it has changed my life. It was a massive change for me. And, you know, through the years, everything has got better and better. Next one will be Nationwide Night. Which is the, the one over here. It yeah, is, okay. yeah. Really proud to brought people in like that. And he's not the only one, as I say, that we've got lots of people that we've, we've brought in. Yeah, this one, this one, this side. Yeah. More shade to that. Yeah. My name's Dave. My name's Dave. He's my son. And he's my dad. Right now, is it? That's I've been here 27 years in September. And I've been here three years in March. We're both coach builders and basically build the interior of the vans from start to finish. A lot of people don't get the opportunity to, to see the parents every day or see the dad every day or uh, work alongside them. Some kids follow in the dad's footsteps and obviously he's followed in my footsteps, so... <laughs> I just squeeze back there. Around the factory you'll see father and son teams working together or, or family member teams working together and it works quite well. Dave is very experienced in everything that goes on in the vans. Uh, and so if I don't know anything and I need to know, uh, he's the first port to call for me. I came to work here after a period of illness. Um, I was off work for six years with a serious illness. And uh, I wasn't able to go back to my profession, which was I was a professional decorator for 33 years. I couldn't really afford to retire. I had approached one or two other companies uh, and because of my age and the history of my illness, um, they wasn't really interested in taking me on. Even though I wasn't back to full strength, I knew that I've got something to offer to a company who was willing to give me a chance. We, we, we had had a meeting about how busy the company was and I just happened to, to say that my dad might be interested in a job, mentioned his age, and Stuart said, well, get him to come in, we'll have a walk around, have a chat. So. That's what he did. Got the job offer and then he accepted and that was it. They said they were willing to give me a chance. And being a family company, I think that that's what they do, is they give people opportunities and then uh, it's up to you to, to fulfil that opportunity, really. It was an opportunity for me to, to do something for me dad that I suppose most sons don't really get a chance to do. He's a good student. He's a little bit rebellious now and then, but um, it's like anything, you, you know, you, you've got the end product that you need to get made, and you have your own way of doing it. Well, he's taught me everything I know, so um, my, t my turn to teach him a few things, <laughs> isn't it, really? <laughs> Come on, David, let's go and get a brute. <laughs> been in ice cream literally all of my life from my father's day in the 70s when he started the local ice cream business that he had um, he then handed that over to uh, myself and my brother and I still go out in an ice cream van uh, most weekends just to keep my hand in
I got this opportunity from Stuart to become sales manager uh, because in reality, I'd known Stuart and the company many years before that because uh, I and my family, we were customers. And so ordering vans and getting them made here was my first introduction to, to Stuart. But when this came along, the dream job, I thought is something that I've got to do and I'm hoping to do for the rest of my life. When I first came here, I, I definitely doubted myself more than I do now. Everything that I was doing, just seeing and thinking if I was good enough, thinking if I could keep up with the rest of the workers there. But now I've been there for two years, they've kind of took me underneath their wing and really mentored me to understand that I can actually compete with the other people. All finished, bro? Yeah. All cut off, ready? Yeah, all went great. Perfect. Should we get it off? Yeah, lift it off now. Full lift. Yeah. Working, helping Billy, working with uh, younger people, showing them what to do, helping them away. Really enjoy doing that. Good satisfaction doing that. There you go. I definitely think my confidence has grown with the people here as well. And that's what you want, really, for like a first job or anything like that. I, I couldn't ask for much better, really. There is a lot of pressure because you're always, you're always thinking about something that you need to sort of work or something that you need to do. But it's. It's a good challenge to have the bit of pressure there to make you do the job. It's worked out brilliantly. I'm so pleased with how everything has come together. You know, we got our heads together, we looked, think, how are we going to overcome this? And the ideas that we came up with, it worked. It was the best solution. As you can probably tell, I'm immensely proud. <laughs> I feel a bit of emotion, actually, with what I am. It's fantastic because that other that other option that I mentioned of gearing the business up to sell it and to let it go out of Whitby hands, doesn't matter who came on board, it wouldn't be the same. If I decided tomorrow that, I, that for some reason I didn't want to come to work, I wouldn't worry at all. Working together as we have, you know, it's, the ideas have come from us collectively and bouncing them off one another, then, yeah, we, we've proved it not just to one another, but but to our dad and to, to everybody around us. My dream, I'll be, be straight with you. I'd like to think that one day I'm sitting at home, not with a pipe because I don't smoke, and probably slippers I don't wear either, but I'll be there with my glass of wine. I'll be thinking, you know what, mate? You did all right. You built a good brand, respected, but look at what them lads are doing now. That's the dream. And I think they'll make it come true. Um, and who knows, there's another generation granddaughters, grandson on the way. Could be fourth generation before I pop my clocks.